Hello, thank you for joining me. You can see where we are. We're at Farringdon. We are on the Thameslink platforms. Doesn't seem long ago I was here when the Elizabeth line first opened. What we're doing today though, we're going to catch a Thameslink train. We're going to go to the newest railway station in England which opened yesterday. That is Brent Cross West. So here we are, we're on the Thameslink train. We're underground at the moment. We're just passing beneath the Metropolitan, Hammersmith and City lines. We'll soon go through the old King's Cross Thameslink station, and then we'll continue on up to the Midland Main Line. And then we're gonna get out at Brent Cross Rest. So today is Monday the 11th of December, 2023. The station opened yesterday on Sunday the 10th of December, 2023. I was thinking about going to visit it, but there was a couple of other things on that I wanted to go to and generally on the first day they're very crowded, look there's the Metropolitan Line so, um, so I thought we'll, we'll go on the second day when it is still brand new so we are enjoy the train ride up there we're going to have a bit of a, we'll certainly have a look at the station have a bit of a wander around, by the way I'm currently sat in first class ah this is the old um, King's Cross Thameslink station where trains don't stop anymore wouldn't fit when it was 319s they fitted all right but you wouldn't get a 12 car train in this is an eight car train so yeah we're in first class i always go and sit in the first class on the same thing because you don't actually need a first class ticket to sit in first class because on the more local ones like this i think this is a Raynham to Luton service there's no first class anyway but there's first class seats and it's always declassified at the back. The longer distance ones, like the Bedford to Brighton, are always advertised as first class at the front only. So basically, you can always sit in first class. And they have, down there, there are um, phone chargers, so you can charge up your phone or laptop, which they don't have in standard class. So that's why I'm saying first class. Anyway, we're now at St. Patrick's National. I'm gonna continue enjoying the ride until we get to Brent Cross West. Passed through Crickle. Right. So we are shortly arriving at Brent Cross West. It's a brand new station. Really looking forward to taking this one off. We also want a winning unit for me. 70056. I checked in my book, I've not travelled on this unit before, so winning unit, winning station. Well, down there, that's the Dudding Hill line. I can appreciate the sun's very bright, but that goes down through Dudding Hill down to Acton Wells. I've it's not a passenger line, but I have done it on a few charter trains in the past. Sometimes railway touring company have done trains which start at Ely Broadway. So I've travelled out there with steam, usually up to York, up the middle of main line. There's also another side of the triangle, which is even rarer. I did do that once on the Hastings unit. So here we are. This is Brent Cross West. And, uh, what we're going to see here. So we're going to have a, a look around the station, look around the site and then I thought because it's called Brent Cross we'll perhaps just walk up and finish at the shopping centre. So here we are, we're going to get out our first or our declassified first class. Here we go, this is Brent Cross West. Yeah, unfortunately our train had, had a, suffered a bit of a graffiti attack which was so I actually sat on the other side to what I'd normally sit on because I couldn't see out the window at all. Well here we are. So you've, let's just see trying to see so we've got two island platforms. So these are the slow lines, they're the fast lines. I can't see anyone on those platforms, so it may well be that they don't let people on those platforms unless there's a train that you can stop, because as you can see, they don't stop. That, that's probably a Bedford to Brighton. I always think I should do that journey one day. Um, I'd have to do it in declassified first class. There's another unit, that's an eight car unit pulling in. So let's just have a look. So there's a waiting room down here because I can imagine it could be quite cold. The people who are waiting to catch the train have just come out so let's go and have a look inside. So it's nice to know, oh, it's warm in here. 
if you were to be waiting a while for a train, you've got a nice warm waiting room to wait in. Is that another door there? Can we go out here? Oh, yeah, there's another door here, so we can come out and have a look at this. As I say, it's very bright down there, um, but the line, as I mentioned, is goes down to Dudding Hill. Sometimes when I've done steam specials, we've actually stopped there to take water, and that's been quite fun. And the, we haven't done it at all this year, or, or did we early this year? I can't remember. The last time I did one, maybe it was a year ago, I last did a steam special up there, and I remember seeing this station under construction, because we were sat down there, and you just looked out the window, and you could see that Brent Cross West station was gradually taking shape. There goes this other Thameslink unit. I'm going to walk now down to the northern end of the platforms, and then we shall... Oh, that's a Raynham train. So, yeah, you've got trains going to Raynham, trains going to Sutton. When they go to Sutton, they form like a loop, so you'll get some go down via Mitcham Junction, others take what's known as the Wall of Death route, which goes... Um, where does it go? It goes down from Wimbledon through Wimbledon Chase. I remember when I first ever did the Wimbledon Chase route, I'm going off for a slight tangent here, I got off at Wimbledon Chase and I saw a car, an old larder, and I knocked on the door and they said they were going to scrap it, so I bought it. You'll see that in many of my other videos. That's how I, I got my car um, from trap machine. So it looks like the entrance, or is there entrance both sides? We'll find out, but that is over there. It's certainly probably the main entrance. Of course, Brent Cross Shopping Centre is over there. I did once, go to Brent Cross on the Northern Line and I was a bit surprised because it was quite a walk. You know, I sort of got off fairly naively, got off and thought, oh yeah, Brent Cross. It was, I've been in London and um, we thought we'd just go to John Lewis at Brent Cross. It ended up being quite a long walk. But it's, a, and it's probably a similar distance from here. I think the shopping centre is just over there. So if we look down here, we've got another similar waiting room down there. Got quite a lot of area under cover, so if you have got a wait for a train, you've got the waiting room. You've also got all of this area here. Um, I'll probably see whether any more trains will come through. I'll have to check if there's any freights through. I might, if, if so, it may well be in another video. It's not as exciting as it used to be because you haven't got the HSTs passing through. They were always great fun um, when they used to come through here. And this was the last line in London to have HSTs. I remember going to see them quite a lot. So let's now go out. There's oh I see yeah look there's there's lifts here so it gets you an out station. This is quite interesting. I've just noticed underneath the stairs there's toilets here. So you've got the ladies, men's and um, the wheelchair toilets. If you look on the other side, it's not quite a complete match. There are no toilets. I suppose on the logic that you're less likely to spend time on that platform. The fact there is no one on that platform suggests to me that they are, you know, they only open it if there's a, a stopping train. But what they've done, they've just, that's just empty platform space. Whilst on this side, they filled all this in, like I say, in the toilets. Um, we're not going to go in and have a look because it's probably fairly obvious what they're going to be like. Let's go out of here now and we should go up the escalator and have a look of the upstairs. Interesting, this escalator is only going up. I don't know if the other one was only going down. I expect they're reversible. Anyway, it's quite. Should stand. Still feel obliged to stand on this side if I'm not walking. Um, even though I seem to have the escalator to myself. That's very sunny. So if I'd come here yesterday, I think there'd be quite a lot of people making basically my video. I always, I will have a look at everyone else's videos as well because I always find it interesting to see what other people make of the station. You often get that the various different people will come to a station when it's open. They'll all, you know, have their own take on things. And it's quite interesting to see. You know, there may, may well be things I've missed out, um, etc. So, looking over there, that looks like that that is the way out. And as I said, that is looking towards Brent Cross West. We get to here. Oh, now look. So. That's what I was saying about that that is, that would be your way down to the other platforms. And, um, you know, it's not open at the moment. I suppose a time where it could be used, if the slow lines were closed for engineering works, you may well need to use those platforms. And then, so you've really got six, six tracks because you've got the slow lines, the fast lines. You just see a Thameslink train going through on, on the down fast. 
But then there's the goods lines over there that come from Duggan Hill. They run parallel to the main line and they join at Silk Stream Junction. So there's quite a big flyover of junctions. It's, it's quite interesting when you go up there. You see there's a set of gate lines. I'm going to have to find my ticket for a minute. I bought a travel card. Um, very, very glad they kept the travel card because, you know, travel cards are great for things like this. There's the lifts. Um, well, that escalator's coming up as well. So, it must, so maybe it's like in peak times. They'll have some escalators going up, some escalators going down. I'm not too sure. You've got the lifts. Lifts are just behind me there. And then here we have set ticket barriers. And I have to get my ticket out to get out. And then we'll have a look at the outside of the station. I think the only station now on this line not to have ticket barriers is Harlington, which is further up north. So I'm going to get my ticket out and uh, let's go and exit the station. Here we are outside the ticket barriers, just having a look around. That's where you'll buy your tickets. You can see the tactile paving for partially sighted people leads them to the to the ticket machines. Although, does that mean they have to come all the way round here to go into the station? I can see that it leads to the wide aisle gate, but for me, there should be another set of tactile paving to that wide aisle gate. Anyway, there isn't a ticket office here, so it's just ticket machines. You've got ticket barriers there. There's two ways out. That way goes towards the shopping centre. Let's go out this way to Edgware Road. Um, not Edgware Road tube station, but the road that is Edgware Road. There's some interpretation boards there saying about the building of the station. So it's really quite interesting to have a read. There's a train that's not stopping. It's a bit of a shame because these bridge, this bridge here is over the freight lines and um, they've it's not even glass, it's like plastic. I, I get, yeah, obviously it needs to be like glass, but it's a shame we can't see out there because that would be really, you know, the, the best workings pass through the station. They pass under us and we can't see them. So that's a bit of a disappointment. You can hear the diesel engine, so that'll be a East Midlands train. Oh, this is quite nice. This, uh, got this big wall going down there. That's again, nice, light and airy. It's got these interesting bricks there longer than normal bricks. I should have bought a tape measure. Um, and then every now and then you get an expansion joint. So there's like a line all the way up. That's because they could expand. I wonder if this escalator will start to move if I step onto it. Is it going to? No, I have to walk. So, I'll let you have a look down there. So it's a really quite big, airy ticket hall at this end. We'll go down here, we'll have a look out and then we'll go back through. So that's the other thing I wanted to point out is that you can use this to get through as effectively as a footbridge over the railway line. So that's quite useful. Also, it keeps you in the drive. If you want to walk from one side of the railway to the other, you've got an undercover route. So it looks like there's a few bus routes that stop here. You see a couple of buses have stopped there. It's always nice when you come out of stations when they're nice and neon. Look, there's a map here. Um, yeah, so we're, we're there. The shopping center's up there. It says it's, a, uh, it's at least a 10 minute walk. Perhaps a bit closer than it was from the Northern Line. You could, you could go to the shopping center that way. I don't think I will. I'm gonna go back into the station. We'll walk through and out the other side. I'm just gonna go over here. And um, there's an interesting looking oriental building over there. I'm not sure if that's a restaurant or quite what it is, but that's quite fascinating. It's like a, I think it's a Chinese style building. Interesting. There we are. That is Brent Cross West Station. So a really big sort of bold entrance to the station. I nearly said ticket office or ticket hall, but it's not. It's just purely an entrance. Go upstairs and then you can say you buy your ticket up there. What I think we'll do now, we'll go in again and we'll walk through it and we'll see what's over at the other side of the station. There's also an area here it's where you can park your bikes etc. Um, it just seems a shame that we're with the most exciting trains passing through there you can't see them so if a steam train was to pass through like I say they're quite often on the um, on, on the freight lines if you can't get onto the platform nearest, you're not going to get a great view, but there's plenty of ways you can see. Now it's looking up. I'm going to make my way up. We'll go out the other side of the 
station. Obviously you can't smell it on screen, but it smells all really nice and new. Another diesel train going through a class 222 run by East Midlands Railway, so they don't stop here. They're gonna be replaced by new Hitachi built trains. And I expect the 222s, maybe they'll go to cross country to help boost their similar Voyager fleet. Here we are, back on the bridge again. You can't see out. Interesting, if anyone watching could answer a question, why is it this bit is made so you can't see out of, but the next bit up there, you can see out of. I could understand if there was residential properties, they don't want people gawping into their gardens, but there isn't, so why are we not allowed to see out of there? But we're allowed to see out of here. Yeah, I genuinely don't know if anyone does know. Please do comment and tell me. We've got a mat to tell you where to go. Are we on the map? Yeah, look, can you, there we are, Brent Cross West is on the map. Interestingly, you get what they call these OSIs out of station interchanges. So when we use Harringay as an example, you could be traveling to Harringay, you could walk from there to Harringay Green Lanes, or you could walk from Manor House to Harringay Green Lanes, all the way between the three. So that's an outstation interchange. So basically it's a short walk between stations. There isn't one between Brent Cross West and Brent Cross. So that suggests it is quite a long way. Um, it's probably maybe not a mile, um, maybe sort of three quarters of a mile as the crow flies. Could be about a mile's walk. Oh, once again, we can't see out of here. I'm not quite sure what's going on here because I think there used to be more railway lines under here. So they've had to build a really elongated footbridge at this end and over whatever was down there. Well, this is nice. We're just coming to another ticket hall. And um, oh, this is, there's two sets of escalators and it's all quite nice and wooden. And look, I like this, this is nice. This, the other entrance was kind of big and impressive, but this is really sort of nice. Um, so there's more lifts there. That's quite a good view, look. Get yeah, a view. You can stand here and watch trains, if you like, 10 to 20 units. So at least, at least they've given us this one, but yeah, not that one. So that'll be a 10 to 20 unit heading south. Let them go. Down there is the declassified first class, which I like sitting in. Oh, look, there goes a class 360. That's what East Midlands trains use on their electrified routes. They used to work out of Liverpool Street. All right, let's go. Down. So what have we got? We've got two escalators. So there must be an intermediate level. I wonder why. We'll find out in a moment. Going down first of the escalators. Some plants and everything up there, nice. I like this, it's all wooden and whilst the other side was sort of brick and brick and glass. Okay, interesting. There, oh that's nice. Look, it's like a garden, that's really, I, I like that, I'm very impressed. But why is there an intermediate level on the lift? Is there gonna be one day maybe, surely not another shopping center, is there gonna be something going out there or out there? It seems unusual, why does the lift need an intermediate stop? So again, if you're watching, please tell me, or is it just if you had to use a lift, just purely so you can come out here and admire this view because it is a view worth admiring. Perhaps what I'll do then, so I said that goes down on down there. I'll actually have to go down the steps because that escalator has got a, a what's name across it. If you have a look at these, these are for the pasture sites because it says Brent Cross Town way out. But I'm going to go down in the lift because I want to walk through that garden. Yeah, that is um, really, I really like that. You always get it on the new stations. There's a gentleman down there taking the pictures. It's quite funny because most of the people here today, even the station opened yesterday, most people here today are just here like I am, just to have a look. I wonder which lift we're going to catch. So that might be that one. That'll take us down and out station. And go. Mezzanine. Mezzanine. We're boarding the lift at the mezzanine level. Doors opening. Doors are opening. Lift going down. Lift going down. So we're going down to street level. Doors closing. Footbridge mezzanine. So that side is for the footbridge, and this side is for the mezzanine. We're going down. Street level. We have arrived at the 
tree level in that garden area. Which is doors opening. Doors opening. Oh, what's that? Okay. Oh, I see. There's another um, went off town. Oh, when I was off camera, I heard an announcement, and it was Tony Blackburn. Apparently, he does all the announcements. That's interesting. It looks like down there is a possible future way out, and then here you've got all the bikes. So, not many bikes there yet, but we'll have a look in a minute. It looked like they were building various new flats and everything in the apartments, so maybe there'll be more people who want to drive their bike. Is this way out? But it looks like we can get out but we'll have a look maybe like i say it's a developing area maybe one day maybe one day there will be a reason to exit the station here get quite a good view of the general structure over there of the station once again we're under the stairs in this rather large under stairs cupboard where you can put your bike if you want to and now we're going to walk out through this garden so i think what's happening in the area is they're making a load of um, new flats and everything so it says a new way to live um so yeah i don't know if that's going to go also to the lift um that gentleman's waited at the wrong lift anyway so yeah a new a new way to live this is all really quite nice so there'll be all these flats might not be my kind of place to live but probably is generally quite pleasant to live i like this garden though this garden is really nice you know you could just sit here just sit here and enjoy. Oh look, there's a picture there. That I think is here in a few years time. So I think the idea is they're gonna build offices each side. So they'll build offices, that's it. And this won't be kind of quite the free standing structure it is. It'll be in amongst various other buildings. So they'll open these offices and that explains the mezzanine level. So that, yeah, it's, this is one of those videos where I'm discovering it as I go, which is always quite fun. Gardens, though, I really like them. Like, I'm, I've always enjoyed visiting gardens, you know, National Trust offices. So, I like how they've brought a bit of the garden into the station. I think it's a really nice feature of the new railway station. We're now going to make our way, continuing on to make our way out of the station, and we'll have a look, see what's going on. Then, I think I'll walk to the Red Cross itself. So, here we are. We, we have now exited the station, and once again, there's some more bus stops. Although it says these bus stops are closed. So, developing area, I don't really need to wait to even cross the road, there's just no traffic at the moment. And there we are, look, look at that, that's really impressive. So I think if we come here in a few years time, a bit like when we went to Bark in Riverside when that was brand new, it's going to change. There will be buildings each side of the station. So here we are, Brent Cross West. I'm going to wander off down there and go to the shopping centre, get a cup of tea. So I walked to Brayton Cross Shopping Centre, there's been a complete maze through old and new developments. There was quite a nice park called Claremont Park, but it's not straightforward, and that's exactly what I found when I once visited Brayton Cross Shopping Centre from the Northern Line. We're almost at Brayton Cross Shopping Centre, there it is. Um, I'm not, you know, going to do the, the video in there because it's going to be as it's always been pretty much. I wanted to point this out, this is the River Brent, which of course is where the area gets its name from. It's one of sort of London's not so well known rivers. Everyone knows about the River Thames, and probably if you ask people to name another river, they might say the River Lee. But the River Brent, it's about, I think it's nearly 18 miles long. It flows from sort of up in the hills up beyond Hendon down to Brentford, you know, Brentford on the River Thames. So this is River Brent, and that is Brent Cross Shopping Centre. I'm going to go in there now and finally get myself tea or coffee after walking all this way. I didn't think it'd be quite this complicated. As you can see, there are various buses. I think the moral of the story is if you're going to go to Brent Cross Shopping Centre, it's very much designed that you drive here, although when it was built, the traffic wouldn't have been anything like as bad as it is now, or you come by bus. The, the station, I suppose, has a bit of a clue in the name, Brent Cross West. It's west of Brent Cross, so it is a bit of a walk to get there. But anyway, I am here now, so this is Brent Cross Shopping Centre. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's always great to see another new railway station open, so thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, and comment from Brent Cross Shopping Centre by the River Brent. Goodbye.